Hello everyone, and thank you for coming to our virtual presentation on the inclusive learning environment in a 360 degree panoramic view. First off, I just wanted to give you a little background. My name is Jamie McIntyre, and I am one of four of the Adapted Physical Education Consulting Teachers in Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools located in North Carolina. Thankfully today, one of my coworkers was willing to help me out. His name is Doug Smith, and he will be doing part of the presentation. Our job is to support the PE teachers. They are the direct service providers, but we complete the students' evaluations, co-teach with them, and provide resources, ideas, and even collaborate with the EC teachers, who are also known as the special ed teachers in other districts. What I'm showing you right now is our website. When we went virtual last March, we decided that our website would be the best way to continue to share resources with our PE teachers. This way, we weren't sending emails every day or every time we found something new. Since March, this website has evolved into an all-in-one. Our PE teachers and our special ed teachers can go onto our website to find just about anything related to APE. On here, you can also see the bit.ly link for our website. Let's scroll down so I can show you that. Here's the website link, bit.ly slash CMSAP, all caps. Write that down if you want to look through our website. It's also the easiest way to come back here and find our 360 which is located right here under what's new. It's also located if you go to PE teachers and then CMS AP resources, it's under there too. We decided to do a 360 after attending a PDP last January and we hope that it's a great resource for our PE teachers to see what a typical setup of a gym could look like and what resources they could have. All the things in our 360 are resources that we share with every PE teacher in person and on paper. However, having it all in one will hopefully remind them of these things and continue to re reinforce them. Now I'm gonna open up our 360 so you guys can look at it. And here we go. Please note that when looking at our 360, that all of the numbers, so one, two, three, four, five, and six, are part of our schedule or structure of class. Any of the X's, so anything over here, are things that should be avoided. And any of the stars, see the stars, the green stars, are resources that are typically linked to something else. Now Doug is gonna take over and tell you a little bit about universal design and how that's incorporated into our 360. Okay, thanks, Jamie. So as our team was beginning to create this 360 project, we looked at the framework and the philosophy of universal design for learning, uh, and it really became the backdrop and the foundation uh, for this project. If, if you're not familiar with universal design for learning, uh, I would encourage you to research it, dive into it a little bit. It really helps you to ask some questions about what are the best practices for students with disabilities and for all students of all abilities. It helps you to to look at some different strategies and techniques that address the needs of all these students, but gives access to the curriculum. It helps to eliminate barriers in terms of accessing that curriculum. So as you look around in our 360 project, you'll see the numbers and you'll see the stars. And a lot of those are strategies and techniques that are universal design that would work not only in a small group setting, but can work in a gen ed setting as well. So universal design for learning focuses on providing accessibility to the widest possible range of students. It's about being proactive and in designing your environment to make sure it gives students the most successful access to the curriculum. Some of these strategies include visuals and schedules, instant activities, a variety of levels of engagement, and a variety of different equipment that students can choose from or you can help students choose from. I want to give you a couple other examples of universal design. I'm going to share another couple of pictures with you. This is one of my favorite cartoons. And it talks about, um, it shows a, a students trying to get access to their school on a snowy day. And the school worker is shoveling the snow off of the stairs. 
and there's a student who uses a wheelchair and he says could you please shovel the ramp which is right next to the stairs and he basically says well as soon as i finish shoveling the stairs so we can get most of the students in i will then shovel the ramp but he says but if you shovel the ramp first we can all get in so a perfect picture of accessibility of showing you that the ramp is the universal design strategy there one other picture to give you an idea about it an automatic door you see these at a hospital or a doctor's office or uh, at a grocery store and you think well this is a great idea for someone who does use a wheelchair but think about how many other people can benefit from this tool if someone's escorting um, a patient into the hospital if you are like many people right now you don't want to touch doorknobs perfect way to enter the building and if you're carrying two heavy uh, bags in your hands and you need help um, assistance accessing that building perfect for that as well so that automatic door becomes a universal design strategy for you to access the building and in our case what we're talking about is accessing the curriculum all right i'm going to go back to our 360 now okay starting at number one one of the great things about this 360 project is the how it's so interactive when you click on a number uh, you will get more specific information related to that uh, area of the gym and so you'll see that here at the front door um, you have uh, the the rules and the expectations entering the gym but first it is so beneficial as the physical educator to meet and greet students as they enter that door it's important to help the, the teachers that are coming in with the students to give them assistance to greet each student by name say hello to them and help them have access uh, to your um, to your gym environment and again i'll click on number one and the other part to that is establishing that positive routine uh, right from the very start and having some rules and expectations now for our students that are attending small group it's usually more uh, beneficial to use a schedule rather than just go over rules so having a schedule that tells them what's first and what's next when they're finished uh, that usually works really well um, for some of those students um, but in general as a universal design it's great to have uh, rules and expectations posted um, and I like the rule of three uh, where you have three rules that are very specific uh, that are very to the point very simple um, and that also have visuals along with them really help students know and understand what is the expectation as they come in to the gym moving over to number two our number two section is called lap, lap time so after you have meted them greeted them as they came in come into the gym uh, get them started in a as soon as possible an asap or an instant activity let that be the routine uh, something that they start first thing as they enter and during lap time uh, they start at a cone and they will go around the gym doing laps around the four corners of the gym you can use cones any kind of markers that will determine uh, directional uh, ways to go around the gym and it's it's important because it gets them moving as soon as possible and it helps you to focus on some of their goals that are related to locomotion so you can play music during this time it's a great time to play upbeat music have students walking jogging um, doing other locomotor activities it's also important um, to maybe help them feel what those locomotor movements uh, feel like um, one way you can do that is by playing a drum and providing a rhythm so a, a physical education teacher could play a drum slow and that would signal a walk and the physical education teacher could could play the drum a little faster uh, which would elicit a, a a running motion or a jogging motion around the around the gym and then you could play an offbeat uh, rhythm which might signal a gallop or a skip uh, as they go around and then maybe a single beat on a drum 
uh, to signify a hop. So get them started quickly doing locomotor activities. Now let me address the two X's here. As Jamie said, uh, the X's being caution or something that you want to students to avoid. So if you have extra, uh, you know, equipment, gymnastics equipment, in this case, extra basketball goals or anything that you need blocked off, it's a good idea to put a barrier up, put, uh, mats up, um, or some kind of partition to block something that you don't want them to get distracted with. And then same thing with the uh, gym door, your office door rather, um, you do want to close that so they do not get distracted uh, in your office. And then moving over to the star. So remember we talked about the stars and the numbers are great strategies. I'm going to click on that and it's going to talk about um, the six S's of equipment. So I'm going to click on the six S's here. And what comes up is, a, is an article um, from Dr. Healy and it was posted by our Adaptive Physical Education Advisory Council here in North Carolina. And he uh, talks about the six different S's in relation to equipment and using a variety of equipment to help our students become successful. And so you see that providing a variety of sizes of equipment, maybe a larger ball would help students be a little more um, successful. The sound of the ball, if you have um, uh, students that need auditory support, giving them a bell ball or a beat ball, would help it to be more successful. Um, in general, having support such as a suspended ball, a tee, or a ball on top of a cone um, to help them support in case um, they have a hard time, students may have a hard time with a tossed object or a tossed ball to them and trying to strike it. The surface of equipment. So this can be adding texture to, the, to a ball or equipment uh, for a bigger, better grip and a better handle. Um, things like a bumpy ball or a squishy ball uh, may help them catch, uh, be more successful with, with that kind of um, texture and surface. And the speed of the ball. Uh, you know, think about equipment that if you toss it or roll it, it's not going to go all the way across the gym or uh, escape from them so that they have to run around and chase it. Think about a beanbag being tossed to a target. It's going to land and it's going to kind of stay there. So providing uh, different types of equipment that may help with a slower speed. And then switches uh, are great uh, use of assistive technology. Um, for example, if you have a student that needs to use a switch to project the ball down a bowling ramp. Um, so very important there as well. So uh, great things to think about in terms of providing um, multiple types of equipment to provide success. And um, these are universal strategies um, that are, uh, help students to become uh, successful and to um, give them the best uh, access to their curriculum. All right, on to Jamie now. Thanks, Doug. Now we're going to talk about group time, which is number three on our 360, right here. Group time happens after lap time, and typically it's some type of stretching, full body movement, or warm up to a dance or a song. Each student should have their own personal space marker, so they are aware of where they should be standing to complete these movements. For us, we use poly spots in this 360, but you can use tape on the floor or floor paint or any of those options, or anything that works for you. The microphone right here is actually noting where the PE teacher should be standing during group time. Your back should always be towards the wall so that you can see your whole class and help each and every one of them. The next thing we have is our visual packet that we created a little bit over a year ago. That's right here under those stars. Visuals benefit everyone in APE. They provide reinforcement and prompting without using your words, not overwhelming the students. On here is a bit.ly link to how our how-to video right here, bit.ly bit slash visuals how to, and make sure you capitalize the V, the H, and the T, otherwise you won't get there. But today, I'm just gonna go through what we provide in our visual packet. So we're gonna open that up. The first thing in here is the APE small group checklist, which tells some great ideas about how APE should work. 
So here is our small group checklist. The things that are included in here are the physical structure and visuals, communication strategies, teaching strategies, and even data collection or assessments. So that just gives you an idea of what should be expected in your class. And if you need help with any of those, we hope that our PE teachers reach out to us so we can come out and help or include in any of those strategies. The next thing in here we have is our AP handout classroom management. We are also gonna go over this in just one minute because this is also the schedule that we're gonna go over. So that's our small group adapted PE schedule. So if you just wait one minute, we'll go over that. The next thing in here is our class schedule for you to print out and you can laminate. This can be used in class. You can make a big one or just a sheet of paper. And this is where you put all your picture symbols down the line so you can see or so the students can see what is expected of them for this class. They know how it starts and how it ends. The next thing here is the first then board. which most of you I'm sure know, but first is the work that they're going to do and then is the rewards. So it might be that you need them to dribble 10 times and then they get a one minute break, anything like that. The next thing we have is our lanyard. So we print these all out and then we laminate them and you can hook them right onto your lanyard so there's easy access to grab them. These are the typical quick picture symbols that you might need. Stand up, sit, walk, any of those, stop what you're doing, or it's time to work. And just because it's a desk, work is still in PE, they still need to do whatever is asked of them in phys ed, even though it's in the gym and they not, might not be sitting at a desk. The next thing we have is large picture symbols. Those are just used as if you want to print them out bigger, but we also have the smaller ones that you can use on the smaller schedule. So you print them out, you cut them and then you put them on the schedule. I'm sure some of you, if not all of you, have a visual schedule that you use, but these are the ones that we provide to our PE teachers. These are very basic and there's obviously a lot more that we can share, but we just provide these to start and then they can ask us for as many more as they need. The other thing right here is our number of stations. So these are just big numbers and then we just say place your picture cue or visual here. So you might use these for lap time to tell them you go one, two, three, four to do your laps. But then these can also be used for your stations. So once lap time is done, you'll use the numbers and you'll put a picture here. Like maybe this station is basketball. So you put a picture of a basketball on one and maybe station two is specifically dribbling. So you put a picture of um, someone dribbling a basketball. The next is the stop sign. So we typically give our teachers about four of these, but if they need more, we will supply more or they can print them out on their own and laminate them themselves. We say to use these on any doors on the outside or any stairs, anything that's unsafe that you don't want teachers, I mean, you don't want students going on. And the last thing in here is our EC assistance and PE. So it's how to utilize your assistance and PE, whether, I mean, it might be your teachers to the students, teachers that come in, but typically it's the teacher assistants that come in to help our students. So it just gives you some things that they should be expected to do. And if you're ever having difficulty with an assistant, you can always hand this to them just to, as a reminder that our students are still supposed to be working in adaptive phys ed, so they need to be helping them just like they would in the classroom. So it just goes through and has some activity ideas on the back. The last thing in here, I'm not gonna show you, but it just goes over what's in the visual packet. That's just for us. We print it out and put it on the folder before we hand it to a, to a teacher so we know that everything's included. All right, so we're gonna go back to the 360. So I'm going to click the next thing, which is that schedule. So I wanted to go a little bit more in depth in this APE schedule. So I want to take one more minute to go over this. Having a schedule in place that all students can see as soon as they enter so they know what is expected of them will allow success. The first page is all reminders of things that you should be doing when teaching APE. For example, space. Make sure if your gym is really big, you're dividing it into small sections. Sometimes a really big gym is just way too overwhelming for our students. And make sure you're removing any other materials around the gym. 
The next thing is visuals, which we just went over, but you can definitely have a schedule, have some picture symbols, have your stations labeled so they know what's expected of them and it's not just words. Uh, signal, so use a consistent signal from transitioning. So it can be a clap, it can be a whistle, anything that is just consistent. You use it every class, they know that's when they need to start and when they need to stop. And then the schedule is what we are gonna go over. Communication and collaboration, make sure you're talking to other teacher assistants and the EC teachers to see how they're doing and how the AP is helping them and if they're making progress on their goals. And then differentiating instruction, of course, we do that all day long, differentiating to meet individual needs, and then always promoting inclusion. That's a big one. We really hope that most of our schools are having our gen ed students attend with our special needs students so they can all work together. So here is our small group AP schedule. It's just a sample. It's an example for what our teachers can do. Not everyone follows it exactly, but a lot of our new teachers will just because it gives them that structure so they can start it out that way. The first thing is you're welcome to so you greet the students at the door. And then we have lap time. So start class promptly, have students move right away. Get that energy out first. And then you have group time. And you're going to guide students through those movements. And just so you all know, these are the numbers that are in our 360. So one through, I think it's six or seven, are all of these. So number one is welcome, number two is lap time, number three is group time. So that's how we kind of made the 360 around our schedule. And then we have activity practice. So that's your modified game, your practice for Special Olympics, your goal specific skills, your stations, anything like that. And then your closure activity, just lead a final activity. It might be stretches, it might be walking two laps, and then exiting the gym, making sure they're lining up and they're calm before they're heading back to their class. All right, the next thing we have is this question mark right here. This is actually the same schedule that we had, but it is our virtual learning example, so our remote schedule. So we had a lot of teachers asking us how they would implement their schedule during remote learning, and this is what we came up with for an example. So the first one is still you're welcome. You're still going to do your welcome, say hi to all your students, and then show your visual schedule. You can still show your schedule through the computer. And then you're gonna have a warm up rather than lap time. And we just shared a few good videos that were good for warming up. And then our group time, we have um, some basic stretches linked right here. So if you click on that, it brings you some, some basic stretches that might be good for a group time. You can also do anything else that works for your class virtually. We just thought that the stretches would be a little bit more simple for the remote learning. And then for activity practice, we gave some suggestions and also we linked in some equipment modifications for at home. We did not make the equipment modifications at home, but someone shared them out. So feel free to go look at that. It is a great resource. And then we still want the closure activities. And for remote, we suggest doing a dance or movement video and you can do this synchronously or asynchronously. And then always your exit being the same, saying bye, let them know what's happening next week or next class and let them know what they may need. So if they might need a ball or something. And then we just have some reminders. The only thing we added was the additional tips for virtual PE, um, which means having a plain background during Zoom with little direct distractions. Um, and then taking time to chat each student. And also if you happen to have an iPad with a timer going so the students can see exactly how much time they have left, that'll be a really great All right, so the next thing we have, we have two X's over here. So this is for environment. You want to minimize distractions as much as possible during your adaptive PE classes. So this needs to happen whether you're in the gym, class, hallway, wherever you're holding class. And you can use visuals such as stop signs so the students learn that certain areas are off limits, such as the stage, climbing wall, your office or equipment room. I'd also suggest putting these stop signs on any door to go out of the room. So right here we say environment should be clean and limited to distractions. So that means that you might want to put a stop sign on these steps so the students can't get up to the 
page. And then over here with your climbing wall, you might want to use mats to block off unsafe areas like the climbing wall. The climbing wall is a great thing to have incorporated into your lesson. You can use it. We're going to talk about stations in a little bit. And you can use it as one of your stations. But when you don't want them using the climbing wall, I would suggest putting mats up just like we did over here. So we put the mats up to block off. In this specific gym, there are a lot of basketball hoops over here. So we put up mats to block that off. And I would suggest also doing the same thing over here. All right. So the next section we have is number four, and that's our game time or stations. So this is where students should be learning skills and practicing their goals. So this is the part of the lesson that may change periodically, or it should change periodically, but um, it should not change every class. I would leave them the same. We say to leave them the same for at least three or four classes so the students get used to them. And then when you do change them out, you don't need to change all, if you have four stations, maybe don't change them all out at the same time. We suggest changing one out at a time. So let's say we're doing basketball and we have three stations and we have dribbling, passing, and uh, the next one is shooting. Well, maybe next class we're going to start incorporating some rolling because we're going to transition into our bowling unit. So we're going to take out shooting so then we'll have a dribbling basketball station a passing basketball station and then a rolling bowling station so you just slowly add one in and then the next week you can take away another basketball one and add another bowling one and it just slowly adds in so we're not changing too much every class the other thing about stations is they can all have to do with the same thing or they can be different things. So it can be four different basketball stations or one could be balance, one could be soccer, one could be throwing. It just depends on what you're doing. Sometimes we like to have one station that is goal specific. So I would assign a TA with a data sheet to that station and have students participate in their specific goals. When applicable, of course, some students have goals that are following directions or staying in their assigned area. Those are things that you can take data on every class, but if a student has specifically a goal on certain object control skills or certain locomotor skills that you need to see separated from the class, this would be great to have a station just for that. All right, and now we're going to go over here to number five, which is your final cool down, your activity or your closure. So we want to make sure we have an idea an area for our closure. So this can be in the same spot over here where group time was. I would suggest if these poly spots are not in your way, you can leave them for the whole class. But if they are, just make sure you move them out of the way and then bring them back for closure. So examples of cool down would be relaxation with some music, some breathing exercises, some yoga, anything that's just going to bring that activity, that energy level down. So we want them to go back to class ready to learn. They've learned so much. They've been working hard in PE. They just need a minute to get back down, bring that energy level down, and get ready to go back into the classroom and sit in that, just sit in that chair and get ready. All right, we have another X up here. Um, and we suggested also using mats to block off this ladder. Of course, the majority of gyms do not have a ladder randomly in it, but that's but this one specifically does. And your gym might have something that most gyms don't. So just make sure you're aware of that. Um, and if your gym has something that is unsafe, make sure you're blocking it off and find, or finding a way to avoid it from just becoming in the way. All right, and number six is the last one. It's that exit or dismissal lane. So there should be a designated spot for the students to line up. It can be on the floor, poly spot. You can put tape on the floor, same as what you did with group time however you want it to be, just make sure that they know every class they're going to this spot. So right here, you can see the poly spots in the line. These students know to go right here and you can even continue lining them up down this way across the back. Just so they have that specific spot, they know what's expected at the end of the class. All right. And again, our bit.ly link is that bit.ly slash CMSAP, all caps, and that will bring you we're right back to this website and our virtual 360 is right here if you want to look at it individually. We also have under PE teachers, PE modifications, 
we have some specific um, modifications for each skill for the North Carolina standards. So under motor skills, we have some catching, rolling all these great videos to use. And then we have some IEP goals with some goal examples for each grade level. We are still updating this, so um, just be aware that some of them have not been put in. We have all the goals, we just have not had a chance with everything being a little crazy this year to actually upload them. So the, and the other great part right here is our small group AP lessons. So these are the activity plans. So they're not the lesson for the whole class. We already went over that with the classroom management handout. These are just the activity plans. So those stations that are changing. So again, this is still under construction. We are still adding to it. So I'll show you one of them. This is the Rollerama. Um, it has which standards you're applying and what, and here you would put what students' goals you're focusing on, what equipment you need, the safety, and then it breaks it down into rounds. And you can have these as rounds or you can have them as stations. It's however you want to use them. They're just the same. Okay, thank you so much.